Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks for watching Four Low Rocks. Today it's all about hooking the Jeep up to the R-Pod and departing camp. And we'll get to that right after this. So unless you've been doing this all your life, there's a little bit of a kind of a checklist or a procedure that you need to go to to connect the Jeep to the tra R-Pod or any travel trailer that you might have to make sure that it's safe and sound and ready for towing. There are several things that you don't want to miss when you're doing this and we'll go through those as we back the Jeep up to connect to the R-Pod. Uh, one thing about today, I'm going to be filming as if I'm departing camp, but I'm actually not. So I'm going to take you through some of the steps that are necessary, but not everything, and we'll go through some of those at another time. So preparing to tow a trailer such as the R-Pod with a Jeep or any other tow vehicle or any other trailer as a matter of fact really boils down to three things. It's preparing the trailer to be towed, preparing the tow vehicle to do the towing, and then double checking that you have it all connected and ready to go before you hit the road. And that means deliberately going over each and every connection twice to make sure that you've got it right. So let's get to it. First things first in preparing the trailer to tow is you'll notice that I am using a set of locks here to try to prevent theft of the trailer while we're away and gone. So somebody just can't back up to this thing, put their ball up underneath there, huck it up and then tow away with it. So the first thing is to open the hitch clamp lock that I have here. It's just a master lock. And we'll take that off and set it aside. The other part that I'm using this red master lock here this one goes up and it actually has a ball on it and it holds tight so that you can't get anything up in there. The first thing is to release the ball lock, give it a spin, pull it out and away, and it comes out just like that. And this is what locks and prevents anybody from putting their trailer ball up underneath this hitch. Our R-Pod is equipped like many other travel trailers uh, with stabilizers on each corner to help stabilize the rig when it's parked so that it doesn't wobble and shake all over the place. These are not really levelers, they're not used to support a whole lot of weight, they're just to stabilize it. So it's very important to take the weight off of these before you start moving the tongue jack up and down or you could bend these things a little bit. So we're going to retract these and get them up out of the way. I'm not going to pull them up all the way because as I said I'm going to put these back down and camp here for at least one more night. So now that we've retracted all four of those stabilizers on each corner of the R-Pod, it's important to note that all of the weight of the trailer now rests on the two wheels and the front tongue jack here. And for that reason, I like to make a personal policy that I keep the wheel chocks on both wheels until I'm completely hooked up, double checked, and ready to roll. That way, there's no possibility of this R-Pod rolling forward or backward and dragging the tongue jack or possibly even bending it as I get ready to put the Jeep underneath it. So this is the Jeep portion of the weight distribution hitch that we use to tow the R-Pod with. This slides into the receiver on the back of the Jeep and is really the tongue portion of the hitch with the ball mounted on it and we'll show you how this connects up to the weight distribution bars here in a little bit. But first, I use this master lock hitch link pin to keep this thing secure on the Jeep so that nobody can take this thing off while it's sitting around a parking lot somewhere uh, with nothing on it. Otherwise, it's just easy to pull right out of the Jeep. So we'll go ahead and install this on the Jeep, secure it with the lock, and get it put into place and ready to tow. So we'll just insert this tongue into the hitch receiver, and we'll line up the holes there for the pin. We'll push the pin on through. Make sure it goes all the way. We might have to jiggle a little bit to get it all the way in there. And secure the lock on the other side. Once that's done, our trailer tongue is ready to go. So now we've gotten into the Jeep and we're ready to back up and make our approach to the hitch ball on the trailer and make sure we can get it all connected up. Uh, we have the Uconnect system in here which provides a very handy dandy view out the rear as we approach the trailer, as you can see right there. So let's go ahead and start making our approach. So we'll use those uh, travel bars that are on the you connect screen to line the tongue right up with the hitch ball and 
We'll make our approach slowly, 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 and right before we get there, we will stop, put it in park, and then we're going to use a well-known acronym in the trucking community. It's G-O-A-L, and that's called Get Out and Look. I want to make sure that I've elevated the tongue of the trailer high enough up that I can clear the ball as I back up underneath it. So let's go take a peek. So as you can see here, we do not have the elevation we need to get that ball up underneath the tongue. So we're gonna go ahead and lift it up a little bit with the electric jack. that there's plenty of clearance and we'll go ahead and get that ball centered right up underneath that tongue so we can connect it up so back into the Jeep and by the way this uh, might seem to be a tedious exercise but it'll pay off believe me if you get out and look several times to make sure that you're doing things right so that you don't crash into your trailer knock it off its tongue jack or something like that it'd be a catastrophe to have something like that happen so let's go ahead and put that ball right on top of the hitch Backing up slowly, slowly, slowly until that ball just disappears like that. Back in the park. Now that we've made our approach, we'll get out and look once more. And that to me looks like we're centered just perfectly. And we'll go ahead and uh, turn off the Jeep and prepare to hitch up the trailer. Now that we have the Jeep backed into place, we're going to go ahead and take the trailer tongue and put it down on the ball and have the Jeep support the full load of the tongue onto the Jeep. Let's go ahead and make that happen. Now as you'll see, as the hitch starts coming in contact with the ball, it'll start pushing the ball hitch down, putting more weight on the back of the Jeep, just like that. You want to take it down until it puts a good amount of weight onto the Jeep. So now that we have the tongue lowered down onto the ball hitch, we'll go ahead and lock it in place. Notice I did not retract the tongue jack all the way up because the next thing we need to do is lift the tongue so that the weight distribution hitch bars will work correctly. Let's talk about that first for a little bit. So these very hefty weight distribution bars are part of the whole setup that helps to bring weight back to the front of the Jeep and take some weight off of the tongue here in the back so that the Jeep levels out so that we get better steering and braking action at the front of the Jeep where we all know in most vehicles about 70% of your braking comes from your forward axle anyway. Uh, these bars, if you notice, they're round at the front, they fit into the receiver hitch and they're flat on the back and they ride along these bars here in the back creating friction that causes the sway control and also to lift the weight onto the forward part of the Jeep. So the way these go into the receiver hitch is they just pop right in. Just like that. And we'll head over and do the other side as well. So now what has to happen with these sway bars is this end here has to fit up onto this bar here, but you can see that's not gonna happen just by pulling it up. The easiest way to do that is to lift the trailer tongue jack to again, lower the front of the Jeep, bring the hitch up and it'll slide right on. So let's make that happen. You should see the back of the hitch coming up, the front of the tongue coming up, and this is becoming much, much more level with the sway control bar on the trailer tongue hitch. Now we should just be able to lift it right up onto there. Just like that. And then so we secure the end with these two little pins to make sure it doesn't pop off. We put this little cotter pin right in the bottom there and that's all set to go. So let's show you the alternative way of doing that on the other side if we put some weight back down on the hitch. So you might run into an occasion sometime maybe when your battery is dead or the motor has failed on your tongue jack and you can't get the thing up high enough in the air to make these brackets fit onto the 
their bushings or onto their friction parts. There's a way that you can get around that by using this handy tool that came with the sway control hitch. The way this works is to pick up the end of the bar, put the end into the hole there, and pop it right on. Just like that. And once again, we'll secure the end with our handy dandy little aluminum bars. By the way, this hinge, this linch pin, or this hitch pin goes in with the round part facing forward because what you don't want to happen is as you're, as you're driving down the road, if you had it the other way around, if a rock came up and hit it and pushed it out backwards, this came off, then you're in a little bit of trouble. So you put it this way so any ops, uh, anything flying off the road will hit it here and just keep it in place. So now that we've got the weight distribution hitch all set up, it's time to completely retract the tongue jack so we can drive away. And once again, you'll see the tongue lowering down onto the Jeep, but it won't go down near as far before the tongue starts coming up. So I'm not going to bring it all the way up as I told you because I'm not actually going to drive away with it today. I've got another day or two of camping left. But you'll see a lot of people at campgrounds will stack some uh, two by fours or four by fours up underneath there so that they don't have to move this tongue jack up and down so far. And that's probably a very good idea that I'll use into the future. Now earlier when I prepared the trailer to be hitched, I showed you that I had a lock on this forward part of the hitch ball securing lever there. And uh, what I need to do is to put that back into place while we're cruising down the road because you, what you don't want to have happen is for this thing to pop open and release the hitch on you and for some reason or other to try to wind up all by itself on the road. Probably be a bad situation. So the next thing to connect are these safety chains that I have temporarily attached to the bottom of the R-Pod. So what you want to do is, is cross them over so that the left side of the trailer connects to the right side of the Jeep and the right side of the trailer connects to the left side of the Jeep so that in case the hitch comes undone while you're traveling down the road, these will form an X and will support the tongue as it falls away. There's another safety feature that we'll, that we'll show right after this that will slam the brakes on in case that happens. Now we'll go ahead and get the chain for the other side. Now the next safety feature that comes into play when you're traveling down the road, and it's very hard to hard to see, is this emergency brake controller here. With this cable, the pin is connected in there. And what happens is, if the trailer becomes separated, and the chains fail, uh, and all other safety mechanisms fail, this cable will hold on to the Jeep, it will pull this pin out, and the integrated controller on board the R-Pod will slam on the trailer's brakes and bring it to a stop. And this just goes up and connects to the safety chains. And the last step in connecting the trailer to the Jeep is to plug in your 7-wire harness into the Jeep's controller box. This controls the braking system, the tail lights both left and right, the turn signals both left and right, and also sends power to the trailer to be able to charge the battery and run a few things such as the brake controller since the brakes on this are electric. So there you have it, it's all connected and ready to go. So there you have it folks, the trailer is well connected to the Jeep and we're ready to roll down the road. Almost. Remember that I told you that the last thing I like to do is pull the wheel chocks from the wheels just to make sure that everything is in place. And prior to that, I like to perform a brake and turn signal and a lighting check at the back of the trailer. Oftentimes, I will use my wife as my second pilot to go back there and check them for me. But if I don't have her available, I'll take a GoPro, put it on a little stand behind the, the uh, trailer. I'll get inside the Jeep, fire it up, and I'll run it through the brakes, the turn signals, and the backup light just to make sure it's all working. Then I'll get out, review that video to make sure it's looking good before I'll drive away if I do it myself. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Practice always makes perfect, right? The more I do this, the better off I can get. And the more I do it with a checklist, the more accurate I can get. There are a couple apps that you can put onto your phone to create a checklist for yourself. Some people actually like to have a binder of checklists inside the trailer and they follow those as an airplane or an airplane pilot might do as he fires up his airplane and gets ready to take off with it or even before he lands. Uh, that's probably a very good idea because there are certain things on this uh, setup that you've got to make sure that you take care of 
or you could wind up damaging your Jeep, you could damage the trailer, you could damage somebody else's property, all kinds of stuff. You may have seen the movie RV where the, <laughs> kind of one of the funny plot lines was that you drive away with the awning still hanging out of the side of their uh, RV and they rip it off the side. I certainly want, wouldn't want to do that because that's a very expensive replacement part. So again, thanks for watching and until next time, happy wheeling. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment below. And if you haven't already done so, please click that subscribe button as it means a lot to me and it helps to support the channel. Lastly, please follow 4 Low Rocks on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until next time, happy wheeling!